Hey, what's up fam and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna be going over three of my big tips. <laughs> no, I said three tips, T-I-P-S. For coin op collecting. If you're just starting off, here's some things that I do to help save time and sometimes money. It's all totally subjective to what you prefer and what your goals are as far as your collection. Quick disclaimer, I am a novice, but these are just things that I've learned in the last year that have really helped me. These are just a couple things that you can do that are very cost effective and keep your machine looking kind of fresh. Let's take a look. So let's talk about some of the things that um, you can do to save money when you're working on arcade machines. Now this is just my opinion and these are things that I do. And some people like to go the full on original route. And one of the important things to note for me is that I definitely don't eliminate that option. So one of the first things I wanna show you guys is this. You can get these and this has got like a little magnet thing on it off of Amazon for about 12 bucks. A lot of times you'll get an arcade machine and either the light power source has been clipped or these older ones use fluorescent bulbs and then they have to use a starter and sometimes they just don't work even if you replace the starter. I personally will leave the original harness intact and everything so that, you know, if somebody else ends up getting it, which is unlikely, but if somebody else does end up getting it or I have to sell it, then it'll be there for that person to mess with if they want. I just end up wiring up these little Amazon lights as my solution. Now, this one over here uses the original bulb system and all I had to do was splice the wires back together, no issues. So that's using the original, but this one is using the Amazon one and so is this one. Both of these had the same fluorescent style of bulbs and with the starters and both of them just wouldn't work. So all I did was splice this light into the harness and it's usually two, it's like green and white or green and red. Um, it just depends on the cabinet and the harness. But this is one thing that you can do that is inexpensive and quickly fixes your problem. And it's also low power consumption. So I think those are 110 volts. But anyways, I'll leave a link down in the description. Another inexpensive thing that you can do is replace the locks and also put bolts in these holes. You can pick up these bolts at Home Depot and just stick them through there and slap a little bit of black paint on them and you're good to go. But these locks are about $12 to $15 on Amazon. They come in a set of two and they work perfectly. So usually when I get arcade cabs, the locks have been drilled, damaged, or there's no keys, whatever the case may be. And so I always end up buying new ones on my Fast and Furious. I've got those Capcom, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 cab. Now on my Neo Geo, I actually did not uh, put any locks because there's this fat security door. And you can see there's been like a lot of drilling down there. A, that's what she said. Which is fine. It's not a big deal because the security door covers it. I did replace these because um, they look kind of like the ones on my Tekken. So I'm also going to at some point replace those. I just ended up painting the security door. I was like, oh, it looks kind of cool. It's different. So there's that. Sorry, it's dusty. <coughs> Another thing you can do is this plexi right here. Um, a lot of times you can just clean it off and spray like spray simple green on it, douse it in simple green, rinse it off and then scrub it off with like a magic erase marker or um, even like a microfiber towel and just reuse it. I mean, I try to use as much of the original stuff as I can um, when I can. And so that saves you time and money, plus it fits the original form factor of the cab. Well, on this one, all I needed to do was drill three extra spots because it was only three button originally. Looks nice. I mean, it's, it's a little bit, you know, beat up, but it overall looks nice and it fits perfectly. It costs about, these are all new buttons and joysticks. And that generally, if you go to tmolding.com, could cost you around 80 something dollars with shipping for this full set, which isn't bad. That's really not bad. Um, but with this one, for example, my Neo Geo, these are all the buttons that it came with. 
I took it all apart, cleaned it, and then just put new switches in the buttons and stuck everything back in. Now you may have one with like a defunct spring or something and then it's like, okay, well now I have to look at replacing it or finding a spare. But I basically just rebuilt these joysticks, put new springs in them and used all the existing button layouts and everything. And same thing with this Plexi. So this is actually the control panel that's been on there since the 90s or whenever it was. That saved me a good 80 bucks or so. Just little things that you can do. And also these bolts, if you use sandpaper and just sand them down or you have like a rotary sander, you can just kind of hold them on there and sand them. And then you can spray them with some rust treatment. Now T-molding is always a nice touch if you want to freshen up your cab or if the T-molding is like really messed up. And surprisingly, it's not very expensive, but sometimes, you know, maybe you just don't want to pay for it. And like, for example, on my Blastroids cab, the T-molding was pretty decent. So I just kept it on there. I kind of cleaned it up with a magic eraser and that was it. But in this case, if you need to replace it, you might have some extra, or if you don't, and you need to order some, tmolding.com sells this stuff for pretty cheap. If you get two 20-foot rolls of it, that's more than enough to do a whole arcade cab and have a little bit left over. And I think that runs about $35 to $45. So um, I personally only do it if I feel like I have to. Uh, another example is like here on my Fast and Furious, this is the original T-molding, but then over here on the back, the T-molding was green. And all this was kind of messed up because there was really bad damage right here to this corner. And so what I ended up doing was bondoing it and fixing it, and then I had to order one roll of chrome T-molding, and then I just used that. So, and it turned out good. So everything else is original though. Like you can see here, it's got a little bit of wear on it. I like to use as much of the original stuff as I can, unless it's just tore up. Then that's when I'm like, all right, well, I gotta figure something out. These cabs that have like the black paint on them weren't bad enough that I had to sand them or anything. So I just cleaned them off really good and put one coat of black paint and that just gave them like a fresh look, that's it. And then over here, this thing was kind of dinged up. So I did actually sand this by hand a little bit and paint some there. But black paint is like $15 for a little can of it and it goes a long way. So this little can, there's still some left in there. Uh, black paint actually put one full coat of paint on this whole thing right here. Yeah. So this whole cab got one coat of black paint and there's still some left in there. Anyways, I know this video was a little bit more raw than usual, but I just wanted to show you guys some of the things that I do. And obviously like cleaning them up helps a lot too. And same thing up here with like marquee plastic. So in, in this case, I actually used the original plastic and you can still see some of the marks on this control panel, but it's not a big deal to me. Like the whole thing is cleaned up. In some ways I kind of like the historic value of it, unless it's just like, totally bashed to bits and ruined. Game over. And it's gonna look really, really, really tacky. Then I'm like, okay, now I have to do something. I mean, this one right here is the perfect case of that happening. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen my restoration video for that Z-Back, check it out. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do all that cool YouTube stuff, leave a like. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. All your guys' support on this channel is greatly appreciated, um, whether you're just coming through and watching the video or whether you're a subscriber or a member. So thanks, and until next time, I'll see you guys then.